All right, you guys, today we'll be learning about some basic fundamentals that I use shooting photography in studio. The number one lens that I use when I shoot in studio is an 85 millimeter f1.8. This is my favorite lens because I love the proportions it gives people. It's not too wide and it's just what I need. But if you don't have, you know, the budget for an 85 millimeter, try out a 50 millimeter. A lot of 50 millimeters out there are pretty cheap, very inexpensive. So if you don't have the funds for 85, you can try out a 50 and I wouldn't recommend going any less than that. So now we're gonna go over modifiers and some of the modifiers that I use are right here in front of me. My number one favorite modifier right here is this. This is a reverse umbrella. And what it basically does is when you fire off the, when you fire off the flash, the light will bounce into this umbrella and come back out through this diffuser so the light is very, very soft. Some other ones that I have right here, right here is a beauty dish. And you know, a lot of people use it. It's very, very popular for beauty photography. And basically what it does is, you know, it's more straight on, it's a harder light, but it's, it's, it's a very hard light, but it's not as hard as just shining a light right on a person. And right in the middle of these two lights, I would say you have your traditional softbox. But in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys where you can take something that's you know not as soft or something that's pretty hard, and I'm gonna show you how you can make it softer or harder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as far as flashes that I use in the studio, right here, this is an Alien B B1600. Alien Bs are pretty reliable. I've used them for a long, long time, ever since I've started. Uh, they don't let me down. So this one is the 1600. This is the highest watt power that you can get. The more the watts, the higher the output. And we're go also gonna go over settings once I get the model here and once we're taking some shots. But I just wanna let you guys know that I use Alien Bs. The Alien B B800 and the Alien B B600 or 400 is also a good one. Um, and they're not too expensive, but those are ones that I also recommend in studio. All right, you guys, so today's model is Mary. This is Mary right here. Hey. And she's gonna be the model today for our photography. Um, right now, I'm about to show you guys some beginner mistakes I see happen when I see photographers get into the studio. All right, so a mistake I see a lot of photographers do is that they get into the studio and the first thing they do is they get the trigger and they just start taking pictures without moving anything or setting anything up. So I'm gonna take some examples of what that looks like normally without just adjusting any settings, adjusting how powerful the light is, where the model is placed. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so those are just some photos that I see, you know, a lot of beginner level photographers take. And so I'm gonna show you guys what I'll do to you know, make these photos better. So the first thing that I would do is that these photos are very, very dark. They're very under, underexposed to me and I don't like the colors in them. So the first thing I would do is probably adjust my camera white balance and I set it to 5,500 Kelvin. That's normally, the, that's normally the color temperature I shoot at when I'm in studio, no matter what the occasion is because I always shoot in RAW, never shoot in JPEG, always shoot in RAW when you're shooting in studio so that I can come in and I can change the effects, I can change the settings later. So that's the first thing I'll do. And then followed by that, I'll go ahead and move this light around. And I don't like the shadow on the backdrop that the model is creating. I'm gonna bring her out from the backdrop a little bit more. I'm gonna move this strobe around and we're gonna see what we get. Okay, a mistake I see a lot of photographers do is point the light directly at their subject. What I like to do is feather the light so I make sure that the top of the light hits the top of the head and the bottom of this light is angled more towards her feet. So I'll show you what that looks like now. All right, so the last thing that I do is that when I shoot in studio, I turn my settings up so that the image, so that the setting is dark and the only light that's hitting the model is this strobe light. So what I normally set my settings to is that my shutter speed is at one over 200 or one over 160. My f-stop is at least a f5.6 or at least a f7 to get a lot of detail in the photo. 
and I like to leave my ISO at the highest 200. You know, just to add a little bit of noise in there, but if I want a clean, really, really sharp image, I'll take it as low as 100 or on some cameras, 50. All right, so the last thing I like to do is whenever I shoot somewhere, I like to shoot in the dark to make sure there's no other light around but the light that I'm pointing at my model. So what you guys can do if you're shooting at home or shooting somewhere that has big windows is just make sure you turn your settings up. Most of the settings that I've just listed will get the area as dark as possible so that your strobe is hitting the model. For today, I won't turn my strobe, I won't turn the in-house lights off just so you guys can see what's going on, but that's what I would recommend. All right, so those were just some photos that I took when I corrected my settings, moved my light around, got everything exactly where I wanted it. The last thing I'll just touch on is me adding this bounce board. So. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is a pretty cheap bounce board. I got it from Amazon. Definitely didn't cost nothing over like $50 with shipping and tax. Um, but this is a bounce board that I use and what this does is it adds some light back under her chin and under her eyes so she don't get them raccoon eyes and <laughs> it adds It adds some light under her eyes so that you know it just fills in the look and just makes everything look really, really even. And I just like to place it on the floor right under the model and that just adds some fill in from the flash. All right, you guys, so first we discuss camera equipment. After that, we discuss settings. Last but not least, we discuss placement of everything in the studio. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, make sure you like and subscribe. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. And last but not least, if you want to reach me, you can follow me on Instagram at Tommy.4K. If you want to reach Mary, MK underscore Shagat. And thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.